rescuing a brother-in-law. This is temporary, everyone insists. Jerry can move into the third bedroom. Our son's boxes stack there in baskets of laundry. He's thankful we're here for him until he gets his van fixed, the prized possession which holds all his possessions, the van that serves as home. My husband opens the hood, checks wiring and gaskets, inspects the propane stove, which has the potential to blow up the garage. Without consulting anyone, in a fit of do-good zeal mixed with guilt, he decides to gut it, gut Jerry's home. My brother-in-law sleeps in a nylon bag laid atop the bed, refusing to slip between the clean sheets, tries to pee nightly into a plastic apple juice bottle, a toilet just a few steps away. He takes showers at the yacht club. Sorry he broke the hot water tub in our tub. The, wa the hot water knob in our tub. Our accommodations for him are transitory until his van is like new. Disposal. My husband overalled, wrench in hand, sink elbow removed, clogged again. Useless, watching him from the side, I offer knee pads. He says, no thank you, not necessary. This won't be long. Which means an all day affair. Me surrendering into the arms of a handsome dark chair. The winter sun setting on mop buckets. My sister's knee. I had to show her one more thing. She wouldn't have been on that tenuous perch, the starboard railing. She buckled on the dock, her good knee ruined. Meniscus and cruciate ligament, excruciating technicalities. Her cries, permanent scars on my conscience the pitch of boat in its berth, the pull of tide. It's safe, I'd said. <laughs>